there was a way we discovered in the house I grew up in to sort of scare off the Jehovah Witnesses when they came evangelising door to door. And it wasn't to be unkind, it wasn't to be uncaring, it wasn't to slam the door in your face. It was to engage with them a little. But I distinctly remember one time where my uncle was engaging with the the JWs, Jehovah Witnesses as we call them, and they would quote scripture at him. And although someone who, for a variety of reasons, has little to do with organised church, he, he knows the Bible quite well, because he was in the BBs, and he would sometimes quote back to them. And eventually he turned around and went, you know, anyone can quote a, Bible, a book. Anyone can quote a book. But how do you live? He firmly believes that it's about how you live that shows that that book actually matters. Well, look at the devil in tempting Jesus. The devil was able to quote scripture, to quote the book. Quoting scripture to try and goad Jesus into proving who Jesus really was. Because if, if he was the son of man, then he could jump off the topest part of the holy city of Jerusalem and he wouldn't, the angels would be sent by God the Father and protect him to the point where he wouldn't even stub his toe when he landed. It'd be tempting, wouldn't it? It'd be tempting to just go, right devil, I'll prove to you who I am. There you go. See? But Jesus didn't. Jesus didn't. Jesus who went into the wilderness away from other people to pray, to reflect, to spend time with God the Father immediately after his baptism. It is baptism when he came back out of the water. A voice from God spoke and said, This is my son, my chosen one, with whom I'm well pleased. And the dove of the Holy Spirit rested on Jesus. Jesus hadn't done anything really at that point. He hadn't begun his public ministry. Yet God the Father was well pleased with God the Son. Jesus knew he didn't need to prove to anybody who he was, least of all the devil. And he didn't succumb to proving himself in that way at all. Although I think we could all see the temptation to go, look, yeah, I was protected, not a scratch on me. But instead, Jesus takes scripture and replies to the devil with it. For each of the temptation, you're hungry, why not make bread from these stones? And those of us who know Jesus' miracles know that that wouldn't have been out with what he could do. It would have been easy for him. But he goes, no. People don't just need bread to live. They need God's word. Every word that comes from God. And no, he wouldn't jump, even though he knew he would be caught. Because it's not right to test God like that. You shouldn't put God to the test. And the devil gave, said he could give Jesus powers over all the kingdoms of the world. And Jesus goes, no. No. Because it's about worshipping God and serving only God. Not the devil, not power, not corruption, not wealth, not status. 
but God. And the devil went away, realising the devil had lost. It's easy to quote a book, but Jesus didn't come to quote a book. Jesus came as the word of God to restore God's relationship with God's people. A relationship which had been broken through Adam's sin. Now for me, Adam is a figurative, not a literal character. So it's interesting how Paul never blames it on the woman. Yet church doctrine for a long time has and still does. Adam was naked before God, completely trusting and at one and peace and comfortable in God's presence. For me, that was more than a literal nakedness that Adam had. It's being fully with God, trying not to hide anything from God. But then, with the temptation and the eating of the fruit, Adam hid from God. He tried to hide his nakedness. And his nakedness was that what, which had shamed him. Yes, he had literal nakedness, but it was also knowing because he'd eaten this fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, he'd realised what he'd done and he'd let God down. He had the one thing he'd been asked to do or not to do to eat of that fruit, he defied God and he realised the consequences of his actions and he hid from God because he was frightened in his vulnerability, he hid from God. So for Paul, Paul is, is saying that there is a new Adam has come into the world Adam was the original archetype of humanity, the one who God formed out of clay and breathed God's breath, giving life into Adam. And a new Adam is formed through Jesus. A new start for humanity. Not a man made of clay, but God, God's self, God's word coming in, flesh into the world as a perfect Adam, the perfect example of how humanity should be and could be. One fully comfortable, fully vulnerable, fully naked in God's presence, in whom Jesus had spent 40 days in the wilderness, completely trusting in God in that period of reflection, of prayer, of maybe even been torn between his humanity and his God self to work out where and how he was to show the world this new, this better way for the world and how God loves the world. Fully trusting in God and God only. Unlike Adam, resisting the temptations put in front of him, Even as we journey through Lent, we'll know and see that he even didn't resist the temptation to not go to the cross. Or when on the cross, the temptation to come down and save himself when he was taunted with that by the crowd. At no point did Jesus not resist temptation, even when the temptation to save himself completely understandable. For Jesus came to redeem the world through his perfect life and its example, so that we can receive the grace through our faith in him and show how that faith matters. 
in living in every word that comes from God's mouth, in loving and serving and worshipping God and God only. As Jesus journeyed to the cross, his path was met by many critics within his own followers and those with power and privilege. In his own power, he could have changed the world more to be how God wants it to be, like that. But he didn't. He showed a different path. It's a path of love, of forgiveness, of not giving in to the power of corruption, of the, the need to prove himself. Because he knew who he was, who he is, the son of the living God. He didn't need to prove to anybody who he is. And he came that we may know righteousness and grace and abundance of love. That we can live on every word that comes from the mouth of God. For every word is the word of God in Christ Jesus. May we live this Lent to know that word more and to live that word and to place that front and centre of all we do, even if it's tempting not to. Amen. <laughs>